What's up, you guys? It's your boy, Dre, man. What's up, Dre Game, man? We here with another YouTube video, man. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and share. We are here with a creepy Friday. Let's get this thing started. Freshman year in high school, I was with my friends, Ivan, Ryan, and Jesse. We were all dressed as the Super Mario characters. I was Luigi since I was the second tallest. Ivan was Mario since he's short and buff. Mario looks Not that Mario is buff. Jesse was Waluigi because he's freakishly tall and skinny. And Ryan Bro, was Wario because he's just really Ooh. fat. So they were the perfect group costume for us. Lucky, <laughs> we live in a very non-congested suburban neighborhood with a decent amount of space in between <laughs> houses. <laughs> On Halloween, that's the worst thing ever. Less bang for Bro, your buck. We were trick-or-treating for hours, way past dark, and eventually came the time when most trick-or-treaters were heading home. My feet started to hurt, and I had to constantly switch arms for holding the now 10-pound pillow bro, sack of candy. Game, but we planned on going until our bags were completely full. Them point and joint, point and a lot of the houses by now weren't answering anymore. It was probably past their cutoff time for giving candy to trick-or-treaters. Approaching our next house, we saw a purple bucket on the stoop, which was the best feeling ever. I was the one Damn. to get close enough to realize no it was you. empty, which was the worst feeling ever. I turned around when I heard a knock at the window of the house. Oh, go to the house at the end of the street. We all looked oh, at the window. What? Couldn't see anyone, but heard someone call out, Wait. It looks creepy enough to myself. The door opened and an older man, oh, no. late forties, no. no, already no. balding, no, stepped no, outside. No, no he told us to come inside so he can get us some more candy. I said we could just Ooh. wait out here. He responded saying something along the lines of, Nonsense, come on in, we'll get you your candy. Bro, why is your head like that? Ivan stepped in and said, It's alright, come on Dan, let's go. I told the guy to take care and apologized. He just stood Bro, there watching as we walked off, not saying anything. I felt bad, Thank but at the same time, take, that take guy seemed like a creeper. And I figured I just dodged a bullet not going in there. Pedophile? Boy, if you don't get- If the story ended there, it wouldn't be scary. So, of course, it didn't end there. We skipped Bro, a few of the guys' walking? neighboring houses just run. to get further is, away and continued on with our business. We were walking down close to the nature preserve now, so there weren't many houses around us. At this point, we were now walking back closer to Jesse's house. I noticed Ryan had stopped Bro, walking, yeah, and I turned around to see what's up. He said he heard someone the moving from behind the, the trees background? in the preserve. Now this was before everyone's phones had flashlights, so we couldn't just go searching in the woods for someone. Besides, we were just telling Ryan that it must have been a raccoon or something. Bro, y'all are down You may dark think street. this is a bit of a cliche, what do you but think when things like this happen in real life, you always assume the more logical possibility. It's just natural. Why would we assume we were being followed? I had to put my arm around Ryan's shoulder and nudge him forward. Bro, why does his beard look like some thunderbolts? <laughs> a little ways down the street, me and Ivan picked up on the sound as well. When we Come all on, stopped, friend. the sounds of the footsteps from beyond the trees stopped as well. Ivan yelled at the obvious stalker to go away, or we would beat the shit out of them. I knew he was just bluffing, though. I could hear the nervousness in his voice. Bro. The snap of a twig from beyond the trees triggered a fight-or-flight response in all of us. What are you doing? Me, Jesse, and Ryan all ran for it. Ivan was at first charging to attack, but he quickly followed after realizing we had all taken off. We ran down the dark street, and we all noticed the sounds of at least Run. two or three. to gather our thoughts and discuss what the hell just went down in his living room when all of a sudden we heard Jesse's backyard now gate slam now. shut. Damn near Jesse died. dove to turn off the lights. There was a click and a bang from down in the den. It was more than likely Jesse's back door. We all agreed to go down armed with knives and face them. Jesse turned on his back door <laughs> light but there was nobody out there. Just then the front door opened and we all screamed like animals. Jesse's mom and sisters came rushing downstairs. They had just gotten home from their friend's little house party. We all rested assured knowing it was just them. Jesse explained what happened, but made it seem a lot less dramatic. Me and Ivan went home after that and called it a night. 
At 12.30 a.m., I got a disturbing text message. Oh, that was, that it was from Jesse. Like it said, it wasn't my mom. I texted back saying, what? He responded back quickly saying, it wasn't my mom in the backyard. My finger slammed the buttons on my phone responding back, what do you mean? There was a long pause before he finally told me that his mom and sisters said they never went in the backyard. I told him to immediately check the backyard from his upper deck. He had already done just that. He also told his mom everything, and she had already called the police. They didn't find anyone back there, but Jesse did mention the guy who invited us in while trick-or-treating. Oh, nothing ever became of that, and nothing ever happened at Jesse's house again after that one Halloween night. I look just ran a rent a cop, right? 